As parents, we try to steer our kids away from pitfalls and guide them toward a positive circle of friends, never thinking that that circle might include terrorists. But the FBI here in Pittsburgh says terror groups are doing everything they can to recruit teenagers, even coming here to meet them and try to lure them in. Here's Pam Serrano. It got pretty far. Most parents worry to some degree about their kids online. A local family had reason to worry. Yeah, it could have gotten bad. This Pittsburgh teen agreed to talk to us, hopeful he may prevent others from doing what he did as he talks to us about his interaction with terrorists online. Like a resource to make connections with people that may be able to help progress to something bigger. This something bigger, according to the FBI, was a terror attack the teen was actively plotting, and he wasn't doing it alone. Special agent in charge Robert Jones couldn't talk specifically about the teen's case, but says the FBI pays close attention to postings online. The vast majority of what we see are people that are overseas uh, contacting these uh, young people online. A terrifying thought, the teen, just 13 years old at the time, was a well-studied sympathizer to jihadist propaganda from the Middle East. He was immersing himself in the ideology round the clock. Some days I'd spend all day reading, pushing myself deeper into being radicalized. So it was more so a religious thing. And then the lines crossed between religion and politics, Palestine. Somalia, Chechnya, seeing people that I would have called innocent that were being caught in between the conflict. As the teen's sympathies grew stronger, he began to actively seek out radical extremists. By the time of about six months had passed, I was uh, in contact with Al Qaeda, the Taliban, uh, regular contact. They were offering support, uh, material support. The teen says the support being offered included money, transportation, and weapons. It didn't matter the teen wasn't old enough to drive, own a gun, or leave the country without a parent or guardian. And I was willing to take what they could give me and use it for what I was willing to do. And so the end result was, was violence. Yeah, that's the ultimate end result. Of the FBI says social media sites make it easier to communicate with jihadist groups who aren't in remote out of the way places but are technologically savvy and make themselves accessible to young people. They are very very good at what they do. Uh, they are very good at manipulating some of the things that they know might be happening in a young person's life uh, to their cause. The FBI says that's exactly what happened with this teen. His misinterpretation of religious teachings caused him to become influenced by extremists overseas. As he became radicalized, he was led down a path of violence. This ideology teaches you to hate, 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 hate. hate. It's really nothing that these groups propagate other than murder. The FBI investigations reveal that most radicalization begins with online curiosity, and that can lead to online chatting, which in many cases can lead to online contact with recruiters. And that's what agents say happened after a period of grooming through encrypted email. The terror recruiters met face to face with the teen here in Pittsburgh. Even then, the recruited teen says he wasn't afraid. My mind wasn't in the right place to worry. The teen says he didn't care about the repercussions. His mind had become rewired to their way of thinking. That all changed when the FBI came to his home. I would be terrified if you came to my door. How do you even approach the family at that point? Coming with uh, an understanding uh, that there may be reasons behind this uh, and showing that empathy is certainly something that helps. Agents well-versed in how kids get in over their heads say the red flag checklist is familiar. Kids spending too much time online. They are isolating, not participating in activities, minimal interaction with family or friends. And it's a good thing the red flags were obvious enough. When someone called authorities that the teen's behavior had changed and he was involved in suspicious activities, discussions were already underway between the teen and the terror group 
to blow up a building. In all cases, best thing to do would to be to say something sooner rather than later. It's in their best interest. Now, the FBI says this young man was caught in enough time, and while he was young enough, if adjudication had happened when he was an older teen, most likely he would have had a longer sentence, making him more potentially susceptible to further radicalization if he was in prison. He was, however, court-ordered mental health counseling, and he spent a year in a juvenile detention facility, and now he plans on, on making good with his life and also going to college as well. This is shocking that's happening right here. But I love that someone saw something and did something. That's the key, right? It really is. Just circling back to if you see something, say something. And that really was the case with this young man, although the FBI couldn't say who in particular saw something and said something, but it was a concerned adult that was close to him. And in like most issues with teens, it comes down to just people talking with people and authorities being notified. It's an eye opener. Yes. Thanks Thank so you much. Too.